right. Uh, I know everybody in the room loves stats, so I got the guys to pull up some stats for me to help me uh, support my point. And I love finding them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's frame this conversation for a second. Uh, here are the top brands and top celebs as defined by Forbes and Branching. Now, um, I think the answer to this is kind of obvious. Celebs will always dominate social media in ways a brand couldn't. By definition, the term social media implies a means of human interaction. And uh, believe it or not, celebs are human beings. Brands are just companies. Uh, and uh, through social media, celebs can now interact with their fans in a very intimate and immediate manner. And the key to those interactions is that they are organic. So no matter what a brand does through social media, it comes across as disingenuous because ultimately people know they're just trying to sell a product. Uh, whereas if I wish one of my followers on Twitter a happy birthday, it's a completely authentic interaction, and people respond to that. Now, I think brands, they have to find fresh and creative ways to have a presence in social media beyond paying a celebrity to tweet about their product, because we all find that disgusting, right? Um, and the reality is that the basis of the internet and social media is freedom of information. And for decades, people were forced to swallow a brand's propaganda, and now they're free from that. I mean, if you think about why TiVo has ex exploded to the point where the Nielsen television rating system in America had to be modified to effectively quantify the eyeballs that aren't watching commercials during broadcasts, I mean, it just shows that consumers don't want to be blatantly advertised to, and they no longer have to. And this theory is ever more proven through social media. Now, as an actor, I sell characters, and ideally, the less people know about me, the more they're going to buy into the characters I sell, but times have rapidly changed. So back in the day, uh, I first joined MySpace and Facebook for one reason. There were too many fake me's, and people were corresponding to the fake me's, and that freaked the real me out. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, so I joined, and then came Twitter, and with Twitter, I saw an opportunity to communicate with my audience in a authentic and organic way um, that they wouldn't experience through a, a PR clip or a soundbite. And of course, I saw an opportunity to, pr to promote my projects, but I noticed something really interesting. The people who follow me on Facebook respond differently than the people who follow me on Twitter. So I began to modul modulate my communication with them based on that revelation. And I now realize that I'm basically mining the information of my audience and tailoring my communication with them based on that information. Now, that approach should sound familiar to a lot of you guys in this room, right? Oh, by the way, I'm not the guy in the middle. Um, now, celebrities might be individuals, but they're now employing people to manage their engagement. They have teams that, in my opinion, rival or exceed, in some cases, uh, that of many brands. And these aren't fly-by-night operations. You know, these, these guys are showing strength in three core areas. Now, one is fan engagement. Celebrities are directly engaging on their social networks, which creates an unparalleled fan experience. In addition, they're using teams to have quick responses to their fans, and they're focusing on consistent engagement. Uh, two is content production. They're creating original photo and video content, and some people are even creating feature films and, and web series. Uh, Pardon the shameless plug, but I myself produced a film called You, Me, and the Circus, which will be distributed uh, digitally uh, on September 4th. It'll be released through Go Digital, and I have a few web series in development as well. Uh, partnerships. Celebs are creating partnerships that transcend being brand partnerships, and they're becoming social strategy partnerships. Now, let's take a look at the social media powerhouse, Rihanna. Now, she uses her key platforms in very different ways. It's clear that her Facebook page is being managed by a team who's carefully trying to cultivate her image. Her Twitter page, not so much. I mean, unless that team likes drinking a lot and picking fights with people. Um, but either way you look at it, we're talking almost 78 million fans just between those two key platforms. So the reality is that authenticity in real life sharing is something that brands can't match even if it's staged. I mean, when Beyonce and Jay-Z, uh, after they had their daughter, they released the first photos of her uh, via Tumblr, the social platform Tumblr. Now, why did they do that as opposed to a major media platform? Or the, the better question is, how does that make them a smarter marketer in social media? 
I think the answer is because they realize the only medium they can truly influence is social media, and investing into that relationship with their fans is more valuable than making a quick buck working with like OK Magazine or some other global publication. Uh, celebs are using their huge social followings in, in, in powerful ways. They're getting their fan bases to drive specific actions, and that's the big dream of most brands, right? Now, Canadian pop sensation Justin Bieber and his 23 million Twitter followers are some of the most active around. In fact, according to Twitter, they account for 3% of their web traffic at any given time. That's huge. Another example is when Oreo, this is kind of funny, but Oreo uh, wanted to set the Guinness record for the most likes in 24 hours, right? And they probably spent weeks trying to plan that. Well, when the rap superstar Lil Wayne caught wind of it, he decided to amass his 20 million plus Twitter, uh, Facebook followers to blow Oreo out of the water. End result, after 24 hours, Oreo had 100,000 likes. Lil Wayne had 600,000 likes. Very short lived Enough said. record. <laughs>